Welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. Week 16 was chock full of action as new players paraded their skills following the January transfer window. We kick things off with our Sunday doubleheader with the league's new teams battling at the foot of the table. Let's see who would prevail in this encounter. And this is how Lime Hall they will set up playing in a 4-3-3 formation. And some new entrants into the squad. Deshaun Bentley will be coming into the starting lineup fresh um, into this team. Marlon Pinnacle there, but present number eight, Jaheim Williams between the sticks. And as you can see, Darius Stewart, probably the most impressive of their midfielders. We are their number 17, and he likes to. He is a creative element for them if there ever is one. And yeah, as you can see, head coach Lewin Persa stated there. Treasure Beach, they will line up with a 4-5-1. Moe Morgan between the six. Lots of experience coming into their lineup as well. So good work being done in the transfer window. John Luca Levy, who's playing in the lower leagues in England, has a cap already for the reggae boys. He'll be wearing the number 44 in the midfield. And Rafiq Bryan, who we haven't seen in the league for some three or so years, has played all over the Premier League. He will go in their number nine and hope to and hopes to boost their goal scoring abilities. Um, has played for Arnett Gardens, Portmore. And Yui, just to name a few, and was a standout in his days of Jamaica College. They are still coached by Omar Wedderburn. Okita Nicholson got this started at 1 p.m. Here at the Jackson Sports Complex. And Trisha Beach with the first real opportunity. Rafiq Bryan, new signing, scored last week against, against Portmore United. One of his old teams. Couldn't find the finish there, just leaning back. Then this shot from Marlon Pennycook who was good from the get-go Pennycook that strike lots of power behind it but just too much elevation over the top he had this strike which was on target sting in the palms of Morgan good free kick it was from Pennycook on his favoured left side and Morgan did well Mar Morgan had a good game as well for the most part it was pretty safe then Treasure Beast driving forward chance here and did find the back of the neck Kadeem Stone but he was in an offside position Richter Archer with his flag up and Treasure Beach denied the go ahead. Then this move from Pennycook into the area. Pennycook probably was fouled even before that. Decided to continue. Should have just ticked that over Morgan who came out and made himself big. Pulled it wide did Pennycook and was disappointed with his finish. They continued to cause problems. Here was Pennycook again running at the back line. Would cut on to his left foot here Pennycook. Pennycook bending that towards the far corner. And Morgan with the exciting save, two hands to it, not finding a finish. Disappointment for the bench, but I think Pennycook did really well, and so he did here in the second half. Brought down, big moment for Lime Hall. Okita Nicholson says penalty. And Pennycook probably went down pretty easily, but there was a push in his back, and he would make no mistake from 12 yards out. Into the back of the net, his first of the season, a man of the match performance for Lime Hall's number eight. And Morgan was finally beaten. Yep, that was it. Lime Hall, their first win in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League, thanks to Marlon Pennycook. Both teams had seven shots, but Lime Hall with three on target, compared to Treasure Beach's two. Busy time for Keaton Nicholson, 22 fouls, and he showed four yellow cars along the way. However, both teams managing to keep all 22 on the park. That was good to see. Two saves each for the goalkeepers and majority of the possession for Treasure Beach. But they just couldn't find a way on this occasion. They passed Lime Hall's defence here at home. Lime Hall with their first three points. It's massive. 1-0 to Lime Hall here at the Jackson Sports Complex. Dwight Jeremiah is our man of the match. It could be no other than Marlon Pinnacook. Marlon. Congratulations on your performance today. But you just, you're not here a long time, but how does it feel to have your first win of the season? Well, that's what we've been working on from, I've been in here, so let us glad it happened today. You missed a chance earlier in the game and, and you, you, you bent over head in hand. Um, were you worried that it would come back to haunt you today if, if you hadn't won? Well, as a striker, eventually when you miss one, you feel it will haunt you in the end. You did miss a lot, well, two really good chances today come back to haunt you. I mean, it must be very disappointing in terms of that regards, but in terms of chances created in open play, probably didn't create a lot. No, you know, not a lot, but I think the first, the, yeah, the second clear-cut chance of the day we get it today. 
And you know, unfortunately, I don't know what to say, but as I tell you earlier, before I win, I will be here, lose. So this is my last game official for Treasure Beach. So, Coach Weatherburn, they are officially stating mutual, by mutual consent, they have decided to part ways himself and, and Treasure Beach. You feel by mutual consent, um, Lime Hall is going to say to this man, stay on board. This is your first win. How does it feel? Ah, it feels good. It feels good to finally get one across the line. Uh, we've, since I've been at the club, uh, we've, we've come close. We've had some good games. We've had some games where we battled. And then there were one or two that we weren't uh, up to par. So it, it's good to, to come out and actually come out on the, on, the, on the right side of the result today. So Lime Hall Academy break their duck in the Premier League, while the results see Treasure Beach coach Omar Wedderburn calling it quits at the St. Best team. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Join us for more after the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The second game of the doubleheader saw defending champions Mount Pleasant facing a tricky tie against the resurgent Malines United. Let's check out the highlights of that showdown. As we see the Mount Pleasant lineup, and they'll be playing in a 4 2 3 1. Shaquan Davis is back between the sticks and must be confident from his recent call up to the national team. The Captain McCullough, Diane Tope in the mid in the defenders line. Rankin gets a start along as, as well as Kimani Campbell. Uh, exciting prospect in Kale Overy, the young 20 year old Trinidadian plays. Daniel Green, who's been in good goal scoring form. Nathaniel James, another Trinidadian. Demario Phillips and point man Shaquille Bradford, their leading goal scorer with nine goals on the season. Malines are looking for results as they try to drive themselves up the table. They are playing with a 4 4 2 as they continue to try and find a partner for Jason Wright. Johnny Flemings back from injury inside the starting lineup and recent additions of Sean Duar and Odin Samuels will be playing in the centre back roles for Malines. They look a lot more solid since those two acquisitions from Dumble Holding. Tyreek Wilson was a player to watch last time out. He goes in the number 19 and look out for the overlapping abilities of Enrique Gordon on that right hand side and the experience of Jeremy Nelson and Javon Brown in the middle. So yeah, this is how it all unfolded. Full match highlight. And they, and yeah, Daniel Green into the area. It was a lovely pass from Demario Phillips initially. This one from James was a peach of a ball and Rankin heading just wide of the upright. My lines, they were in this thick, for thick and thin though. And this is how they went ahead. Off the post from Wilson and look at that from Javon Brown, 20 yards out. Big left footed strike. And there was no keeping that out from Shaquan Davis. One nil after 28 minutes and my Lions were ahead against all odds. They came to play today. Lots for the Mount Pleasant bench to think about. They steadily came into this game. Daniel Green on the left hand side. This is second half stuff now across the area and Aubrey just couldn't get there. Harrison was exposed. Got a bit of a touch, but Aubrey a bit late in getting there. Malines driving forward into Nelson. Thought he had provided a pass. It was Gordon with a strike. Couldn't find a way past Shaquan Davis. Good save towards the near post. He was a bit exposed. And Jeremy Nelson was a bit disappointed that they didn't find the finish. Then the build-up play. Nathaniel James to Bradford. Bradford with a strike. Good save, Harrison. With the right hand, pushing it over. Good save, Peter Harrison. He would have more saving to do. Daniel Green. Many times we've seen him put that into the top corner. This one not quite in the corner, too central. And it was pushed wide. Then James towards the post. Bradford should have hit the target there, Bradford. The goal was exposed. Gets lots of chances, Bradford, and keeps coming. Didn't score today. Then this Bradford just couldn't get the chest trap close enough to him. It was an awkward delivery. And yeah. A chance wasted yet again. They just didn't give up. They kept coming. Mount Pleasant. Devontae Campbell coming on as a substitute. Twisting and turning. Shandy James with the assist. Sule McCullough with his fourth goal of the season. The eighth minute of stoppage time. And Mount Pleasant earn a point. Shandy James intelligent across the area. Questions of offside. No offside. And one all after 90 minutes. Tyrone Robinson had seen enough. 
a big point for the champions. Ten shots, five on target for Mount Pleasant. It was half on target for both teams. Three from six, four Malines. Fifteen fouls between the two. Malines doing a stellar defensive effort. Received a yellow card as well. And Mount Pleasant with majority of the corners, majority of the possession at 63%. But Malines, well, they made it tough. They made it hard. But they only leave with a point. It's one all after 90 minutes. Let's hear from their main centre back today, Malines, putting a big work. Odin Samuels, he's with Dwight Jeremiah. Odin, I know it felt like a loss, but you're still leaving here with a point. I mean, you're really putting a th touring performance in defence. And let me just take you back to the point where you, you had a challenge on Nathaniel James, the Trinidadian, and you towered over him in that first half. You sort of set the tone for this game. Yes, because I know that as long as I have a good game, the team will have a good game. But unfortunately, we fell asleep in the last moment. But we have to just regroup and come again, stay positive for the next game. It took you 90 plus 8 minutes to break this team down. It was a real uh, good performance from your opponent tactically. But somehow, I just felt that your team wasn't so creative in the final third. They, didn't, they went side to side and you had moments where you had a link up, but not enough. Well, I think we, we weren't fluent in, in, in attack this afternoon. Um, the combination play, we didn't use the width of the, pe the field. You know, we, the Molens team score against uh, the runner play. We find it difficult to find our footing back in, in the game. And as I said, we left it late. We know from your days with McGrath, you know how to set a team up and you know how to be organised. It almost paid off today. It was almost a tactical masterclass. I mean, we, we, we planned. Uh, we came, we, I, th I thought we delivered. Um, we lapsed in the end, but I mean, I'm not feeling good, <laughs> obviously disappointed, because I think we should have gotten all three points. But, but let me say, thumbs up to the guys. I thought they played a discipline, and for most of the game, they were very, very organized, and I, I want to say, you know, big up to them. So a late rescue mission from Mount Pleasant to keep their five-game unbeaten run intact, while Malines continued to garner valuable points as they inch further up the table. We take another break here on JPL in 30. More action right after this. Welcome back to JPL in 30. Our Monday night doubleheader takes a spotlight in wet conditions in Kingston. First up, the stars of the East Harbour View entertained Clarendon's Humble Lion. Here are the highlights. But here's the look, a quick look as we get ready for Humble Lion. They take their picture. Jardel Williams will always be at the front of any picture. <laughs> here's the lineup. Sonny Barnes in goal. Cleo Clark, Afiba Chambers, Malik Robinson, Andre Scott, Kareem Bryan, Andrew Vanzi, Livingston Walker, Jandal Williams, Javain Thompson, Roshane Sharp. That's the lineup. They're coached by Vassal Reynolds. They line up as a 4 4 2 with Robinson, Chambers, Scott, and Walker, the back four. And the strikers, Javain Thompson and Cleo Clark at the top, the rest in the middle of the park. Experience of plenty for Harborview. In goal, they have Glenroy Samuel, the Trinidad and Tobago representative Orderland Harding, Ramin Brackenridge, Akimo Jones and Garth Stewart, the back four, Rohan Brown, Chukumeka, Demar Rose, Joshon Anglin, David Reed and Andre Fagan. The other outfield players, they're coached by Ludler Bernard, of course, the top three run, Brown, Andre Fagan and David Reed. And in the middle of the park, they have Chukumeka, Demar Rose and Joshon Anglin. Five o'clock kickoff in this one. Humble Lion had a great shot through Brian in the first half. And Glenroy Samuel had to really power that one away. Rohan Brown did well on the other end of the park to chip this one over. And David Reed really should have done better. Opting for the pass. And skied by Chidalu Chukumeka. That shot from Anglin skipping off the turf into the hands of Hassani Barnes in goal. How about this for a delivery to David Reed from Okimo Jones. One touch, two touch, three touches. And into the back of the net, the third goal for the 27, the number 27 for Harbour View, the 19-year-old David Reed. A great performance 
from him in the afternoon, rewarding the confidence put in on him by head coach Ludlow Bernard, embraced there by the veteran Andre Fagan. More good moments for Harborview in the first half. Demar Rose, defense splitting pass to Orderlin Harden, the captain. And what about this? What a chip. What a beautiful finish. The sports make that moment of the day. It was really delightful. Hard to execute. Beautiful to behold. Orderlin Harden, his first of the campaign and the second of the afternoon for Harborview. Barnes went low, as you can expect from a keeper. And he really did well, did Harding. More action. This now in the second half. Just at the top of the crossbar there from David Reed after an instinctive strike. After the setup from Andre Fagan, they would continue to press forward. Here's Rashawn Anglin with a pass from Akima Jones, his second assist. How about that for a finish from the number seven? Continuing to climb in the goal scoring charts for Harborview is Joshon Anglin. The man of the match for this encounter. What a finish. No chance there for Hassani Barnes in goal. Doesn't take much for him to get power on his shot. And what a finish it was. Hands up in the air. He pulled the trigger on that one. Well, that was played out. Harding did very well to take the throne quickly. How about this return from Fagan? Got it across. Ron Brown couldn't get the finish, but Amar Thompson, the substitute, could. That was 4 0. And that after 70 minutes. What a moment Harborview had up to that moment. Another look at that turn. Robinson not being sharp enough to defend the turn of Andre Fagan. And it was all happening for them. Humble line would get their moment. Fancy playing it to Thomas, who came on as a substitute, got a deflection, but it was on target from the doctor, James Thomas, number 20, the 35-year-old, getting them in the score sheet. Here's another look at it. Good vision from Vanzi and a good finish. And an able de deflection also aiding James Thomas. Another view, another angle. Same result. He was calling them back to action. Dying moments of this one. Scrappy defending. Came to Vanzi once more. His shot cleared off the line by God Stewart, but on hand was James Thomas once more. A brace on the afternoon. And that was a two for Humble Lion. And that's how it would end. Full-time statistics. Eight shots on target from 15 attempts to Harborview. Seven from 14 for Humble Lion. 19 fouls, 13 of them to Harborview. No yellow cards, no red cards. Ten offside, six of them to Humble Lion. Eight corners in this encounter, five to Harborview. And they really had the majority of the position as well. Samuel had to make five saves. Four made by Barnes and with 53% of the possession, Harborview had four goals to Humble Lions too. Shoshan, your best goal scoring season so far in the Jamaica Premier League. How does it feel? You started that goal, you finished it. How proud were you of that moment? Well, first and foremost, I just want to give God thanks and praise for this goal that I have scored. Give, thank, give God thanks for this victory. Well, on my goal, on my build up, I tell myself that I have to go out there and get a goal, get the three points, and see if we can make it to the top six. And we, we go there and do it. It's been tough for Humble Lion and uh, Vassal Reynolds. And Vassal, when you look at this performance, how you finished the game the last 10 minutes? Where was that from the start? Yeah, and, and, and it has been plaguing us. Um, we have been having some good, some good um, fight last 20 minutes. Um, we need to correct our, our first half, though. Um, uh, we were in the game up to 30 minutes and then we fell asleep the last 15 minutes and went 2 0 down. Um, came back out, conceded too early one again, and then we, we started to play. Um, it was too late. Ludlow, especially for the first 70 minutes from Harbour, you what a performance as you remove the court and whatever else. Um, 
yeah, I think it was a good performance for the first 70 minutes. And then we decided to inject, we decided to inject um, some players, but I think the probably too many changes all at once may have affected the chemistry. So Harborview bounced back to winning ways, while Humble Lions suffered their second loss in as many games. Next up, it was the Battle of the Gardens as Tivoli take on the junglist Arnett. Some familiar names, especially if you are used to names of yesteryear for uh, the Arnett Gardens team. Quite a few veterans of uh, the Arnett Gardens team of old in the squad tonight. One in the starting lineup. It's a standout at the bottom of your screen. Lennox Russell scored 14 goals for Arnett over five seasons. He won the title, of course, with them back in 2016-17. We'll complete this lineup for you. Houghton, of course, between the six. You have Lewis Pennycook, Brown and Simpson, the back four. Jones, as well as Nathan Thomas in the middle of the park. Anthony Nelson there as well. And uh, up front, Janil Ray, Justin Dunn with nine goals to his name, accompanying the aforementioned Russell. On the bench for Tivoli Gardens, We'll have the likes of Visional Harris and Steve Clark, former Arnett Gardens players in their own right. Let's take a look at the present Arnett Gardens lineup. Asher Hutchinson is between the six. They have a back four of Watson, Joel Jones, uh, Cunningham, and uh, Gerald Neal in the middle of the park. Marlon Martin, Jamon Shepard, Jakeem Thomas, and uh, up top, Kahim Dixon, the brilliant Clarendon College youngster, who already has a goal to his name uh, in that win last week over Harbour View. Uh, Fabian Reed, of course, as I mentioned, with five goals beside him, and Warner Brown uh, with two goals uh, to his name. As we take a look at the full time highlights here at the National Stadium East Field, and uh, this one was a deflected effort over the top, and it comes in full white. And that was a lovely switch from Kaim Dixon to Fabian Reed back to Dixon, who you'd have probably bet your house that he would bury that one. Cracks the woodwork there, the crossbar in particular. And then lovely save that was Hutchinson denying Dunn, looking for his 10th goal. And then Lewis, an effort from distance wide of the mark as well. And then that was close. It really was, again, just outside the box. Dunn was firing from every angle, wasn't he? Trying to hit his mark. And then Cunningham, a driving force, but straight at the keeper. And then look at this play. Dixon to Shepard. Shepard with the ball over the top. Keep off his line in trouble. Reed converting his sixth goal of the campaign. But that was just delightful football played by the junglist. Absolutely brilliant. Shepard with a divine ball over the top. And Reed made hot and pay. And they were in the driver's seat. And then a red card, straight red card to Morris. Thought about it, did O'Shea Nation. And then flashed the red card in the direction of Tivoli's number seven. Harris, Visional Harris, another former Arnett Gardens player with the free kick. Fabulous save. And then Shepard with the push and Don converting finally getting his 10th of the season joint top scorer in the rain every Jamaica Premier League and they were back level and they were excited in the stands but the storyline would get even better for Tivoli Gardens because with 10 men they got the spirit Initial save by Hutchinson and Steve Clark. Would you believe it with the finish? Lovely stuff. 
Clark on his return to the Jamaica Premier League against his old club strikes against them didn't want to celebrate tried to show respect but he really couldn't hold it in the second time of asking because here he was with the space and the finish to make it 3-1 to Tiffany over Arnett the Arnett Garden defence at 6s and 7s was your case for a handled ball here well in all the excitement nothing doing and Clark getting his second in minutes and that was all she wrote Tiffany Gans with 10 shots 5 on target and it with 11 shots 2 on target and you can see the amount of yellow cards 7 in this match and the one red card of course in the end, the position in favor of Tivoli Gardens, 56%. Steve, first of all, welcome back to the Premier League. When you're sitting on the bench today in your new colors of Tivoli Gardens, did you dream that you'd be leaving with a brace and that kind of performance? Well, I have to give Father God thanks for giving me an next opportunity after being 18 months out. Well, on the bench, I tell myself that I have to go out there and do it to prove my new spectators and fans that I can. Two, feeling, two set of feelings at the same time because obviously you're playing against your former club where you spent all of your time in the Premier League. I could see you fighting the emotions when you scored a goal. Didn't really want to celebrate, but the joy was burning inside of you. Yes, I have to give thanks again. But the thing is that I just happy that I go out there and I did it. Disappointment for you. You are a goal up, a man up. But assess the performance in the last 20, 25 minutes. What went wrong? I mean, I think we, we made some poor decisions around the back. Um, but... Credit to Tivoli, they were, you know, I think we managed the game poorly. You know, You've always said that. Um, and I think that's definitely where we made a mistake, you know. We, um, a goal up, a man up, and I just didn't think we made good decisions, you know. And um, they got back a goal, and it's as if we just didn't compose ourselves and get back in, you know. And, and I mean, just unfortunate, but um, I think we, we, we managed most part of the game, and I think we got some good opportunities in the first half as well. Could have scored some goals, but... I must give credit to them, I mean, the way they came at us. Um, and, and, and it worked for them, you know, they made some substitutions and, and it worked for them. We made some as well and um, it injected some life, but we just, we just didn't get the, the, the result that we, we wanted for tonight. But um, we just have to move on, bounce back quickly and move on. And what a performance by Jerome Waite and his charges. Jerome, off here you said the story tonight would have been the new players coming into the squad and you were right. Yes, definitely. First and foremost, congratulations to the Tivoli family. Well tried, Arnett. Uh, today, if you notice, Arnett had the footing. All of them were pretty much prepared in pegs. We fell short there. But despite all of that, you know, it, 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 it ended up being, you know, in favor of the Tivoli Guard unit. And I spoke to you off here about those players who add to the to the team you know for the for the transfer market and today you, you saw what they they basically have to offer that's how we put a wrap on jpl in 30 on your home of champions on sportsmax tune in next week for more exciting football action